dispute onslaught of new models continues. The new generation 350 story began with the Meteor and continued with the classic, the Hunter and the Bullet. We even have a brand new Himalayan, which Define has already reviewed, so don't forget to check that out. Apart from that, we get the Scram, which comes with the older Himalayan engine, and then we come to the 650 Saga. That began with the Interceptor and the Continental GT, and now it's continuing with the Super Meteor. And that brings us to this. Say hello everyone to the Shotgun 650. So where does it fit in the range? How does it all come together? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Welcome to Auto Today. My name is Abhinav and let's get this show on the road. Now the biggest talking point on this motorcycle has to be design. In fact, Royal Enfield has gone out of its way to market the shotgun as a customizable one. One that fits your needs. And there are no two ways about this. This is a handsome motorcycle, especially in this stencil white color. The single seat, sculpted tank, which holds slightly less fuel than the Super Meteor, looks quite well done. There's also a feeling that Royal Enfield is improving on its quality levels with each motorcycle that they bring out. The rotary dials to control the ignition and headlamps get a gloss aluminium finish, which further adds to its appeal. The Super Meteor borrowed tail lamp with a large rear fender looks rather substantial, but there is a downside to the design aspect. Thanks to the unusually long pea shooter exhaust pipes, they end up going almost to the length of the bike and they jut out quite a bit to the sides as well. This does make one slightly nervous in tight traffic, but nothing that is overtly concerning. Although the blacked out finish of the engine casing does look quite cool. Even the unique headlamp cowl further adds to its appeal. Overall, the design is where it is at for the Shotgun 650. Whether you're just waiting at a traffic light or just going through slow moving traffic, people will notice you and they will be in awe of this motorcycle. Now, if you think about it, that isn't really the case with the slightly dated Interceptor or Continental GT. But that's not taking away from the fact that the Shotgun 650 looks absolutely brilliant. Just like its other models, Royal Enfield has kept it quite simple when it comes to features. It gets a USB Type-A charging port, LED headlamps, tubeless tyres with alloy wheels, and RD stripper navigation board along with a part digital instrument cluster just like the Super Meteor. And that's pretty much it. Now let's get to the most important bit. What's it like to ride and how does it perform out on the road? Well, there's only one way to find out. So let's get to it. But before I head out, just look at the way the shotgun 650 sounds. This thing, isn't it? From a mechanical standpoint, the shotgun 650 sits on the same steel tubular frame as the Super Meteor 650, but there are some key changes. The handlebar is now flat, the seating position has been moved up slightly, taking the seat height to 795mm. Just for reference, the Super Meteor's seat height sits at 740mm. Tire sizes are also different, with the shotgun getting an 18-inch front wheel and 17-inch rear wheel, as opposed to the 19-inch and 16-inch setup on the Super Meteor. The foot pack position is also mid-set, which combined with the changes to the riding position make the Shotgun 650 a much more comfortable bike than the Super Meteor, especially in traffic. In the corners, the Shotgun feels willing to lean, but the foot pegs can scrape right easily, although that is in extreme situations. On normal riding stints, the Shotgun feels comfortable and easy going. However, one can't help but wonder if the handlebar is a little too committed. Another minor complaint is the immense wind blast one experiences out on the highway, but that's down more to the riding position than the fault of the RE engineers. Due to this, sustaining speeds on the shotgun is a little harder than it is on the Interceptor or the Super Meteor. Honestly, that's missing the point with the Shotgun 650. It's all about potting around town in style, it's about being unique from the crowd, and the way one sits on the shotgun does sort of accentuate that fact. The USD folks up front do a great job in handling bad roads as well as clean open highways. Just like its 650 siblings, the shotgun gets the same 
648cc parallel twin engine which produces 47 bhp and 52 nm of torque and is paired to a 6 speed gearbox Royal Enfield has made no adjustments to the tuning of the twin cylinder engine so in terms of power delivery there isn't much of a change the shotgun stutters a bit when you get moving from a standstill and requires a slight amount of throttle input and clutch modulation in fact i ended up stalling the shotgun a couple of times when i first got on the bike but once i got used to it it was smooth sailing speaking of which once you're past the 4000 and 5000 rpm mark this gem of an engine comes alive and the power delivery becomes linear and effortless one tug at the throttle in the mid range is enough to overtake almost anything on the highway it is joyous addictive and extremely easy to get used to at first for some stepping up from a smaller capacity rd motorcycle the difference is quite noticeable but it's not unsettling in any way at all if you're in the mood to push the envelope this motor will oblige with a calm and a vibe free resolve The claimed fuel efficiency figure from Royal Enfield stands at 22 km per liter, but one can extract a little more if they stick to higher gears and lower speeds. So if you're light with the throttle, expect a figure in the higher 20s. Overall, the 650 engine feels at its most appropriate with the shotgun. That's because the riding posture combined with those gorgeous looks means you'd want to take it easy. Luckily that's exactly what RD650 motor excels at in space. So what's Royal Enfield's idea with the shotgun 650? Well if you take pricing into consideration it ranges between rupees 3.59 lakh to rupees 3.73 lakh per showroom. And if you notice that's just below the Super Meteor but just above the Continental GT and the Interceptor. Now if you find the Interceptor to be a little too intimidating or the Continental GT to be a little too committed and the Super Meteor to be too touring focused well this does cut a nice middle path we simply think that this is a very good looking bomber style motorcycle that can handle the occasional highway stint and blast through the city in style with a plomb